Tonight on Claws and Convo. The Phantom? Mainstream? Any effects? We will see. Also, Fox News being ironic. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Broadcasting from Tumwa, Iowa, is Claws and Convo. I am your awesome and doesn't afraid of anything foxy host, Dante Padfoot. And I'm the sexy one, Hanske. I'm the cute one, Striker Chiguire. <laughs> I'm the strong one, Liam Wolf. And we got two human guests with us. Humans. Today. Humans. I've never heard of them. Andrew, would you like to go first and introduce yourself? I'm Andrew Kesey, and I'm falling apart. <laughs> and we got this guy over here. I'm Avon Helgerson, and Andrew Kesey is the gay one in this group. Just throwing <laughs> that out. And uh, Avon is the Italian. So, guys, Didn't we know got, if you could tell. We got quite a few things that we'd like to talk about today. We got real topics, huh? Real topics? Yay! We do. Oh. Damn time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, what do we want to talk about first? Do we want to... Okay, I, I think we should start off by saying um, you guys still have a chance to send us emails. Our main subject of the day is going to be whether or not we would like the furry fandom to go mainstream or not because it's been getting a lot of attention lately, actually. And as Stryker said before, there's actually a fo uh, Fox uh, News segment on it, and they said in the segment that it's starting to go mainstream, and some of us are a little bit concerned and some of us are kind of excited. So, whether or not you think it's a good idea or not, um, we would like you to send us emails at strikepod.studios at gmail.com. Uh, you still have time to do it because um, we have the email inbox opened up right now. Yep. And we'll also be taking calls later today. So, if you want to add us on Skype, um, add us at Claws and Convo. And we'll give you the name again once we're ready to take calls. So, if everyone's ready, we can start taking up some subject material and talking about it. How's Sweet. your day been? I'm tired. You're I'm tired. real tired. How about you? I'm actually feeling pretty good, good, but I don't have any coffee. Well, maybe if you kept track of your cups... It disappeared. You would, you would have it. It was over here just a second ago. I feel I like know. somebody's messing with me. I'm not messing with you. I'm, I'm, I'm too tired to mess with you. I don't, I don't believe you. Believe what you want, man. <laughs> so you can feel, I don't know. Uh, it was, it was you don't somewhere. have a beard. It doesn't matter what you think. Yes, another thing. I shaved my beard. How does it look? I know. It looks horrible. He looks like a girl. <laughs> I had to shave it, so I'm sorry. Um, what else do we want to talk about for our banter segment? Oh, oh. Do we want to talk about the horse that we saw in the crosswalk on the banter segment, or we don't want to do it later? I don't care. Okay. This is a pretty cool video that ought to start off the... Um, podcast pretty well we okay Hanske and I were driving down Atumwa and there's this big crosswalk Quincy Avenue where that's like the biggest crosswalk in Atumwa and we saw a horse uh, a guy we, a horse. Wait, we saw a horse dude that's epic oh my gosh that's a nice that's a black fucking stallion that's a black stallion I want that freaking horse man <laughs> There was, was a, awesome. there was a horse in the middle of the crossway. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's something I let him go. Is he gonna stop? Right stop. there. Look at that. A guy he walked out in that the middle of awesome. traffic. Yeah. Isn't Crazy that horse. awesome? Crazy horse. <laughs> in the middle of a tumble. In the middle a busy of a busy highway. Busy yes, street of yes, a tumble, they Iowa. Did. That was pretty Dude, awesome. that's epic. Oh my god. I gosh, felt like I could die happy after seeing that. I don't know about it. I don't know if I go that far, but well, it was pretty yeah. cool. It was really freaking cool. It was pretty cool. Um I'll I'm, give you that. I'm so glad that I, that I caught that on video because that was really cool. Yeah, it was one of the cooler things I've seen in so the little town of Atomo. My phone has a video on it. No, it's not there my penny. Not it's, it's much my iPod. to see here. Oh. So. There's really not. <laughs> No, damn penny phones don't have anything like that. No, unfortunately they don't. At least it has but like a you're one. You're the only one now with one. It has a one megapixel camera. Okay, let's say that. This is my yeah. penny yeah. phone. Yeah, <laughs> This is my smartphone. It is so. My, it is I still have a flip phone. 
You're old fashioned. Congratulations. Wait, I am old fashioned. okay, yours it doesn't really count because yours has a keyboard on it. It's still a flip phone. It I doesn't mean, matter. It's, it's got a keyboard. It still doesn't have three G access or anything like that. Whatever. I don't my, care. Look you at guys my are phone. Wrong. Look at my phone. This thing is freaking ancient. Mine's okay, well, actually, older. I just recently Mine's it, older. It's still an old model. Mine's older. Yours is older. Mine's older. Mine's newer. That I can believe, actually. It's got quite a few scuffs and marks on it. Yep, yep. See, mine's, so, mine's this. This piece of g- garbage. That piece of garbage. This piece of garbage. So we got another... Um, it's a flip phone. It's See, a it flips flip open. It flips open. Flip phone. So we got another subject matter we'd like to talk about. So yesterday... Not yesterday. Last week, I was in Walmart. Yep. And I was walking along. I looked at the DVD rack. And I saw this movie called Stolen. Has anyone ever heard of that? If so, just let me know about it in the chat room. Anyways, so I go over and I see this movie called Stolen. It's a direct-to-DVD release, okay? It's a direct ripoff of Taken. It's called Stolen, and it has Nicolas Cage in it. If that isn't a recipe for disaster, I don't know what say, is. A, not, not that the, the Taken movies were really that good, stuff. but... Well, this this yeah, guy doesn't yeah. really like the Taken movies, but, and this ah. is probably... Okay. But I is this... Cage. Do you like this better? Yes. Yeah, okay. Like Hold it like this. I'm, the top. Answer, you I'm afraid of it overloading like it did last time. It won't. I fixed that. Yeah, you know what? You're wrong. No, Anyways, if our, t- if our two human guests would like to um, have an, some insight on this idea, what would you like to say about it? On, uh, I'm sorry, what was the... Stolen. Stolen. Stolen? I already said... Okay, let me read the plot. Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up on, on Wikipedia. Really disorganized. <laughs> yes, welcome to Claws and Convo. Organized chaos. Indeed. Two. All right, here we go, here we go. I got it up. The plot point... A former thief, Will Montgomery, or played by Nicolas Cage, is released from prison for a bank robbery of $10 million. He decides to visit his estranged daughter, whom has been kidnapped. Does this sound familiar at all? A little bit. And this guy is apparently like an ex-thief, and he has got all these skills, skills that people like you are afraid of. Does that sound familiar? (laughs) And this, okay, let me read what the critics said about it. This is even better. Okay, down here. Reception. The film currently does not have a consensus rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but a score of 13% rotten, based on eight reviews. Stolen was a box office failure, grossing only $304,000. Yeah. On a budget of over $35 million. <laughs> I think I'd rather see that terrible Beverly Hills Chihuahua movie. I'm yes. not going to lie. Even though none of us like George Lopez, I we would rather not. see that. I know how. I know how. <laughs> Like, seriously, um, I used to watch George Lopez show with my sister, and even then, we only watched it because there was literally nothing else on. Because we, we didn't have cable. We just watched, like, we got up in the morning, and we didn't have anything to watch. I feel like I'm the only one here that likes Nicolas Cage and George Lopez right now. I, okay, I, I kind of like Nicolas Cage, all right? He's, he's all right. He, he can I be good. I am the only one in here. I like Ni- Nicolas Cage is good in certain roles. Yeah, yeah. But... Like I like him in Kick Ass because I mean he's Season not of really Witch he pulled much, it off I thought Season of Witch Season of the Witch was a terrible movie I That's thought it was a I great movie. I heard it was pretty bad yeah. I didn't see yeah. it but I heard it was really bad was really I liked bad. it I thought it was amazing Well you think everything's amazing so <laughs> Ghost Rider <laughs> is amazing guys Come on let's no, be Ghost real Ghost Rider too Ghost Rider <laughs> <laughs> Let's Ghost be Rider real now horrible. Yeah. horrible Your freaking ringtone Oh my word Oh my goodness I am oh. awesome Oh I mean Dante Lock him out. Close the door. Lock the door. Lock him out. <laughs> lock him out. He One lost moment, his privileges. Please. He lost his right. Um, Can I get a spot? Yep, take a spot. Yes. Go for it. Yes. Go, Avon. Mr. Avon Helgerson, our human guest, has taken a new spot. What I would you like to say about this, door Avon? does not he lock. lock the door. He doesn't lock. <sighs> I lock the door. This Leave way. it to a Improvise. game, man. To screw it up. <laughs> So anyways, no one. another mm. plot point. Not plot point. We have a, uh, a lot more people viewing the show today. So if everyone would like to say hello to all the people who are watching today. Hello. Hey, hello. howdy. If we haven't done that already. Like we're glad. <laughs> we're, we're actually. Strangely enough, so do I. Be, being completely serious, we're actually very glad that you guys took the time to come and, and watch this. Uh, yeah, we promise yeah, we'll be, cool. our, be our best to entertain you. The best that we can. I don't know how we're going to we'll, do it, we'll though. We'll be on our best, worst behavior. Exactly. It's good behavior. Exactly. What's that? I don't know what good behavior is, guys. Should, should we tell the joke? Yes, we should. Hey, all you it's people viewing, joke. did you know 
that Matthew Broderick is a furry. Would you like to know why he's a furry? He's married to, to a, a horse. horse. I.e. Sarah Jessica Parker. Ooh. She looks oh. like a horse. Uh, uh, Matthew Broderick is a furry. Ow! Ooh! I actually like Sarah Jessica Diggity. Parker, so I guess <laughs> I'm the one. Well, that's because <laughs> she's in Sex that. in the City, and it's like a proven fact that that's like one of... Gay All right, Liam shows. Wolf, get in here. Your ban has been lifted oh, temporarily. Part of the show. Don't Andrew, be like that. You We're sorry. Uh, you know I love you, right? It, it's fine. I right? love you in a completely um, straight way. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, okay, no, no. Before we allow him in, did you silence your phone? Did you silence your phone? Yes, my phone is silenced. Okay, you can come in. You can come in. If you silence your phone, um, you, you can take you take Avon's here. spot. Okay, Avon, go back to your spot. I'm sorry. Go back to your I'm hole sorry. in the wall, Avon. Uh, okay, another thing I'd like to talk about. So, okay. um, also, shout out to the people who did not Just get to go to Further Confusion, because obviously, if you were at Further Confusion, you wouldn't be wasting your time watching this. Well, maybe you <laughs> would, obviously. because maybe you would. awesome. But yes. Maybe you'd be watching it at Further Confusion. Yeah, that too. But you never know what kind of awesome stuff they have going on there, so. Right. I like orange juice. Anyways, the only reason I brought this up was because me and Hanske almost went to Further Confusion. We live in Iowa, and we were planning on driving all the way to California. Well, you were planning on I was planning on doing California. it. But at the last minute, nobody had money except I, for I me. I knew I wasn't going to have any money. Yeah. I told you. I'm like, I'm I have, have no money, monies. but I'm a selfish person. <laughs> I, I'm poor. I have a lot of money. So, I have no money spending skills. So we will definitely be going to uh, Anthrocon, because that's when Hanske's birthday is. So, Wait, what? What are you fighting? I oh, feel like we should stay focused. Speaking of birthdays, Wednesday was Mr. Stryker Chiguar's birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday, Stryker. Thank you. Happy birthday. Woo! I feel two old. Claps. <laughs> two claps. How old Pass are you, clap. <laughs> How old are you this year? I'm 24. Are you 24? really? 24. You can buy us Man. alcohol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, that's the first thing you think of. Well, we are all raging you alcoholics. Are an alcoholic. Welcome to a tumble. I'm not an alcoholic. Children, please don't listen I'm to me. I'm not this. either. Don't listen Come to on. Me. Don't live like I me. I just want to. I'm curious, like okay? I'm curious. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're so weird, man. I, I love am you. pretty. F- I'm it's pretty an infectious way of talking. Yeesh. Anyway, <laughs> further confusion is going on right now, but so. Let's per- yes, let's promote Watch bad habits. Well, last last week we showed them our pipes. We are we just did. promoting yes. bad habits. And since you then, I, ha- I got a new pipe. Really? Do you smoke it ever? No. Oh, man. No. Oh, no. smoke no. it with us. So, 12 minutes. What are we going to talk about now? We got another eight minutes of banter. Oh, well, figure something out. Shoes. It's like you've never You're the host, man. Before. I'm just the co-host. I just sit here and look pretty. It's my job. Mm-hmm. Hey, whoa. Hey. Oh, Danny, Danny the Border, border Collie. collie. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't monitoring the chat. I should have been. I he was. Says, oh, you were? Yes. Okay. Um, is that the one where something is stolen, he says, when we were talking about ah. something? He says, oh, is that the one oh, where something is stolen? Oh, he says it's fine. Thanks, dude. I appreciate your forgiveness and your grace. <laughs> we love you, Danny the Border Collie. <laughs> Our, I think you're the only person in the chat room besides us. I don't know. So, we well, got a couple of guests in the chat room that don't ha- apparently have an identity. So uh, Okay. Well, that's cool. If there's yeah. any guests in the chat room and you can say something, just uh, go ahead and say so. If not, you can actually connect with Facebook, so you don't have to go and through with this. And signing up is free, so why not? So give us a shout-out, and we'll give you a shout-out. Yes. We love you guest people. Anyway. I love Danny the faces. Danny the Border Collie gives his uh, happy birthdays to you on the chat room. Thank you. So All right. he says, he says uh, is it weird that I just got a pet food commercial? There was something else that we did hmm. this week that we were going to think about. Um, let me look. Oh, oh, should I tell what them the time you beat me up for no reason, you piece of garbage? Sure, go ahead. I was pissed off about a few packets of ranch. All right, so I'm I'm <laughs> super I'm super poor. I I have no money. I'm a college student with absolutely no money. This guy here, he's got a little bit of money, and he's gracious enough to pay for some of my stuff. So the other day, we went to Pizza Hut Wing Street in the morning first, and he paid for me then. And then we went at night, and another friend was going to pay for me then because I just have really great friends, apparently. And so he says, except for Andrew. No, no, I was and <laughs> and so when we left, this kid uh, thought that I left him the bill, and he tried to beat me up, and it was it wasn't necessarily scary. I just didn't know what to do. I was I mean, referring to you were scared. Scary. You were you were scared. I, I mean. wasn't really scared. I was just confused. I was like, I don't know what to do. 
Because this is a little. I weird. wish I would have filmed it because I walked up and I was like, the first thing I did was I threw the receiver. Yeah, and I was like, like you <laughs> fucking bastard! Like you were like, what? Was like, you and were, I had you a great laugh. Laugh. He was in the driver's seat of my car, so he thought, I thought that he was I was mad that I was driving his yeah. car. <laughs> I was fortunately in another car, pointing and laughing. <laughs> you were <laughs> laughing. Yeah, I wasn't. It wasn't that I was scared. I was just like, I've never seen Austin this way. I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to handle it, or Dante, the, or whatever. Basically, the reason that I got so mad was because <laughs> my friends used to do that to me, where they would leave me the bill, and as soon as I f- I thought that he just freaking left me the bill, I flipped out on him, because like all that rage from my other friends doing it to me kind of <laughs> built up. Sure. So that is one theory, or off Austin yeah. is a you raging is maniac. It is. Yes. yes oh, it is. hey, um, Danny and anyone else who's viewing, I just want to tell you guys, if you guys have topics that you want us to talk about, feel free to shoot it into the chat, and we will talk about it somehow. They if will even try. If we, will. If we, we don't know we what it is, we will make something up. Yes, we, we do. <laughs> we, we, are, we have like ADHD. Like we crazy, are masters so. of improv. We are. No, no. Almost. No. Almost. Look yeah. into the chat gun and shoot it directly into our links. Yes. Exactly. I like that. I like that. that Leave it to Avon to come up with a cool thing to say. <laughs> Why is my head cut off? Like, like, look, if I sit up straight, you are Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I, I He's have, a great I'm big a grizzly look, bear. Look, all you can see is my is my chin. You, all you, you can see is his beautifully chin. sculpted chin. Yeah. You don't have four chins. <laughs> I have seventeen. There's no shame in that. You're Asian. You oh, <laughs> you're a jerk. I don't like you no there more. There it is. Oh, there it is. Z. <laughs> yeah, no anyway, jerk? you're a jerk. I'm agreeing with Mason. Uh, <laughs> you're Asian. You know, I don't know why, but I have the feeling in the back of my mind that we didn't introduce Liam Wolf. We did. We did. We did. I don't know why I suddenly. No, you introduced me and then kicked me out of the fucking room. No, I mean like at the beginning of the of the podcast, like when we were talking about. Okay, no, he introduced himself. Yeah. All right. So I do have another topic, but I'm. Why this is black? Uh, probably because my internet on here is crapping out. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We're Anyways. Oh, 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 wait, oh, oh, oh. Is it still black? It is still black. Still black. It is, is black. Oh. I told you, you should have gotten your internet fixed, Brosif. Trying the best I can. Anyways, there so we do okay. have a, we do have another topic, but I think it'll be a kind of a. Do you want to talk about how bulldogs got their name? To, sure. c- to close the banter segment. Yeah, yes. sure. So this is more like story time, but whatever. We don't care. So anyway, I've got a bulldog, and my head's c- still cut off, but whatevs. So, and I was curious as to why they're called bulldogs. And so my dad looked it up, and we were talking, and he was telling me that bulldogs are actually used to fight bulls in London. Like, not London, but in England back in the day, and Europe, all over the place. And the what they would do is they would the bull would be charged them, and the bulldog would snap its jaw onto the, onto the bull's mouth. So, like, it's upper jaw would be on the nose its lower jaw would be on the chin and it would legitimately suffocate it because it had such a locked jaw yikes so this bull would be running around with a bulldog attached to its face and the bulldog would ultimately kill the bull it was i mean that's that's pretty cool if that yeah. isn't badass i don't know what yeah. is i mean it's like my parents making out that's almost like you know a, that's 120 badass <laughs> that's almost like a 120 pound kid attacking a giant over like a receipt from Pizza Hut. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except for you did 120 win. pounds. Stop making fun of me. How much do you weigh? 155. Oh yeah, because that's <laughs> so much more. <laughs> well, still, I thought I'd clear it up. Anyways, like that. Okay, Hanske told me that story, and I was awestruck at how cool that is because okay just imagine seeing that this massive raging bull coming after this little bulldog and the bulldog latches onto him and freaking suffocates this massive beast crazy, isn't that like crazy, the freaking crazy. coolest thing ever we should get a dollar for how many times we say massive massive yes. massive massive should, massive 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 i was being massive uh, times a billion you get a billion literal, dollars my friend uh, sweet I we should we should do that. Uh, we should get a dollar every time I say freaking. <laughs> what, what do you say about that? <laughs> we got another minute of banter. What else do we want to talk about? What we should do is we should just like incorporate products into our segments. Yeah. So then we can ask for reparations on. Yes, we can. Oh, yes. Oh, this, this, this Liam's got his wallet. Out. I think Liam's gonna yeah. pay us money. Ooh. Oh, screw that. I got. I need to spend this money on something else later. Why okay, are you pulling well, out your wallet, boy? That would be Dante's sister. Ha <laughs> 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 Oh! Ah! Waka waka! Waka waka! Waka waka! Wanna hear a funny ass joke? <laughs> <laughs> Family Guy things. Uh, oh, yes. hey, hey hey hey! I forgot to do this last time. Somebody asked me if I have a sec. 
Do you, you have got a, a second? Sec? I have a lot of sex. Hell! Oh. Ow! Oh. Sad thing is, it's Ow. not true. I, 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 I thought you I thought you silenced your phone. One more time, and I'm going to smash it. Okay. Lock it there. Our banter segment is over, and we should go into news about now. And it seems as though the camera has switched positions. It has. Has it? Is it, 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 Why it, is it okay, okay. Somebody, somebody, fix the camera out there. We're all giants. Yeah. We have more duct tape. We're all giants. Everybody. Okay. It we, does log. It's just awkward. We literally weird, have the camera weird. duct taped to. Oh hey, you can the see the wall my face up there. Now. That's nice. Yes. Why do we have an advertisement? Don't know. It's because Ustream. it's you. Yeah, you stream. If you have you a free can account, see me perfectly fine. then. People see advertisements, so. Yeah, which I hope that a lot of people have that because it's a pretty, pretty useful tool. It is. I have it on Google. About. I have it on Google Chrome. It's free. It's if nice. everybody had ad blocker, there would be no more AIDS. Simple as that. I don't believe that. Because you get AIDS from advertisements. Uh, that's it's no. a proven fact. That is not. Oh, that is. I hope you realize that a big portion of the furry population is gay, my exactly. friend. You know what? We can. We'll forgive you. We'll forgive you. Just if it, it happens, better be on silent. If it happens again, I'm done. If I don't. If I hear that again, I will stab it. If if we hear that again, we'll stab it. Vibrate? Yeah, it's on vibrate. Yep. Vibrate? Yep. Yep. Good, because last time okay. it's like on vibrate. And it okay! Off. Indubitably. We can see that it's on vibrate right now. Okay. All right. We want to bring up some news articles? Time for the news. Let's bring up some news articles. We sh- when we have this fun clip here. We do. Push okay, here's something we would like to talk about. Is this the one from Champ Fox? Uh, see, what are the... See, this is... If you're out and about in Cromwell and you come across throngs of half human, half animal beings, don't get spooked. They're just people in animal suits in town for a three day event called Fur Fried at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Fox Connecticut's John Charlton is here now with this unique subculture furries right John that's right Audrey the reason why we decided to do this story is because last month there was a scare at the Enfield library when a person walked in dressed as an animal and that freaked out the librarians because a child approached the person at the time the library didn't understand that it was just a furry well we wanted to get a better understanding of what furries are and to clear up misconceptions and what we found is with furries there's really nothing to fear Jonathan is always top dog with Yukon fans. And Pucky is the world's only ice skating whale. Am I doing all right? Neither says much. Actually, they don't say anything at all, despite being man and beast. However, we found some hybrids better suited to talk. Jason McClett transforms into Zen Fuhr, a Mike's Hard Lemonade drinking Fox Husky mix. Oh, it was leaning towards me. David Sutak is full Husky, static. I have the eyes glowing. The design of the characters has lightning bolts. They are anthropomorphic. Definition, ascribing human characteristics to non-human things. In the fandom... They go by furries. And I love every minute of it. Zen Fuhrer is more of a fun-loving free spirit. Nom, 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 nom. (laughs) Who, unlike some furries, doesn't think he has an animal spirit. Um, I can't really say the same for me. I I don't believe with my heart that I'm a fox in a human body. In his human body, Static was more of a lone wolf. He didn't belong. But as his character developed, so did his confidence. That first time that somebody asked me if they can have their picture taken with me was pretty cool. Static is now part of a pack. Did you put on a different tail? It's a mirror, except that that mirror. It's the one that goes with the character. A Connecticut fur favorite, Rocky Hills Townline Diner is always fur friendly. And as often as once a month, furries of all ages, some with just a tail, some with ears, and some with no accessories at all, gather here for food, laughs, and art. We like to be with our own kind, right? And each furry is one of a kind. 
truly unique, like what flew in from Wingdale, New York. My furry name is Glant Spatino. The instant I spotted him, wow, look at that guy. I was impressed. It's sort of a mixed breed of a dragon and a bat, but most people yeah. seem to call me a bull. So I asked this dragon bat to help us understand why. And you have no problem at all wearing this in public. <laughs> um, I've done it multiple times. I wore it twice at my job. Often misunderstood, furries are sick of the labels, like freaks. It's not like I'm breaking any laws. I'm not nude running around. And perverts. Most furries blame TV for casting their characters solely the sexually. Turtle. I mean, this is freaky, even for me. Furries and their freaky fetishes. It's not my thing. But let me tell you this. There are people out there that do take it like that. People like these furries. Cashy fox and claw skunk. In this BBC report. Yiffing, which is sexual activities. I mean, I like, myself, like, looking at tails, you could run your fingers through it, lift it, wrap it around things. Truth is, the vast majority of furries keep it platonic, at least in their fursuits. Have you ever worn this outfit while having sex? Absolutely not. No? Considering the amount of money I put into this, why would I go and ruin it doing that? What about just the paws? Do, do these look like they'll be comfortable anywhere on you? But if you still think the fandom is bizarre, Taylor Swift took it mainstream with her latest hit. Zen Fuhrer and Static plan to be furries, well, forever. They're having too much fun to hang it up, even though there might be a day when they have to hang up the fursuit. Maybe every other year or something, I'll go to a convention and just, you know, wander off and be like, hey, you know, I used to be a perky little fellow like that. And a great thing furries do is raise a lot of money. At this year's Anthrocon in Pittsburgh, they raised $12,000 at the convention for a pit bull dog rescue. Do a lot of great stuff, those guys. Well, that's great. Some of those costumes are just unbelievably elaborate. Absolutely. Cost 1500 bucks and up. So really not too many furries have a full fur suit because it's so expensive. But when they put it on, <laughs> they mean business. Furries, thanks for teaching us about it, John Charlton. Appreciate it. Well, this was, you have just been watching a Fox broadcast, Fox News broadcast about furries, and I was actually surprised about how much they knew about the furry fandom. Like, really, mm -hmm. they knew, like, an accurate price. Um, they, they actually just, did their homework. They did. Hmm. Fox and, News doing homework. What? Yeah. See, that's, that's Irony. Why Irony at its best. Usually See, this is... Fox News is prejudiced and one-sided and... They are. Republican. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they don't really do their homework. They just bash people. Um, they, they really so yeah, like this is this is going to be most of what we're going to be talking about in news because um, we have failed to bring up many many articles to talk about. Which is because your internet's being done. It's not just the internet. It's like every site we have just has boring boring news that people don't want to talk about. So we'll go to try going to Discovery News. I'm already on there. Anyways, um, so yeah. we internet. should talk about this news story for a little while. Um, like we said, I'm I'm actually surprised that they knew exactly all. Like this stuff was actually pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was a positive thing about furries, which was very very interesting. And another thing to note is that um, I've said this before early in the show, but now you see what, why we want to talk about whether or not furries going mainstream is a good idea, is because Taylor Swift kind of took it mainstream, and that's some of us don't like the idea of that. Um, so. If if you guys have your your opinions about this, we'd love to hear them. Later on, we'll be taking calls, but until then, if you want, you can just send us an email, an email at uh, strike. What was it again? Strikepaw dot studios at gmail dot com. Yes, yes. Strikepaw dot studios it, at it gmail dot com. Is. I'll put it in the chat again. Yes, and you could say something in the chat if you want to. If you just want to say something briefly. Um. Anyways. Um. Point being, we'd like to hear what you have to say about this, and we would also like to give our opinions. I would also, I mean, I mostly want to give my opinion and see what you guys think. Um, we got something from Danny. We got something from Danny. Ah. This is in the elephant ones. I presume forgot what music video. <laughs> <Thanks>. Indeed. <laughs> Come on, stop being dumb. So, yeah. Um, we've been trying to get up some news for you, but the only stuff we have is just so 
uninteresting that it's not even well, your internet's, you know, on, like on your the internet topic the of uh, the fandom going mainstream mm-hmm. you know, uh, the, the way I've kind of uh, observed it is the fan the furry is sort of branching off now on one branch you've got the uh, kind of sort of uh, close net underground uh, sort of uh, Social culture that yeah. uh, sort of a backbone of everything. Exactly. And then another branch, which is sort of the classical, just the fans of the you know, human animal thing. Just mm-hmm. They're just the fans. They're not really that deep in the culture, but they think it's really cool. So yeah. you got that branch that's going mainstream. Mm-hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, we're pretty much always have the one branch that is just the close knit. Uh, uh, subculture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there there have been a lot of subcultures in the free fandom, but mostly it's just the core one that you know. And and uh, like I said, you know, most people that are watching this will know that uh, one of the things I love about the fandom the most is the community. And we're fr- and absolutely. And the main reason we are concerned that it's going mainstream is because um, uh, we're afraid that the community won't be the same. And then it'll be full of people that just are in it just for, you know, shits and giggles. So, you know, they're just like, oh, there's this weird thing called furry. I'll just get into it, you know. Because a lot of us prefer to have it underground, you know. Same thing with a lot of metal or how uh, dubstep was to begin with. It was kind of underground. People liked it that way. And then it went mainstream and everyone talks about it and it's not the same. And and metal has, heavy metal has pretty much uh, held on to that, to a pretty yeah. good degree mm-hmm. uh, yeah but um see yeah i mean i've heard people talk about this before is that you know furcast has talked about this you know at least once and they've talked about how they this basically the same opinions as us is where we just kind of prefer it being underground and i, I guess we could talk about some perks about it going mainstream like people would actually know more about it and you wouldn't have to explain it to everybody right. And if you want to be open Rebecca. about it, you wouldn't have to explain. Like I said, you wouldn't have to explain it to everybody you meet. You wouldn't have to deal with bullshit as much. Exactly. That's now true. this guy, I okay, maybe not this guy, but I have a friend who Trey McIntosh, who thinks the furry is kind of a weird thing. But he's, I mean, he's not. He doesn't hate it or anything. He just thinks it's kind of weird. Whenever I introduce myself to as a furry in front of him, uh, to other people, he will blurt out, "It means he likes to masturbate to animals." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's pretty funny sometimes. No, you, you, can, you, you gotta have the hand gestures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Trey McIntosh, <laughs> and I masturbate to animals. <laughs> we talked about that last week. We yes. did, and we almost had him on the show this time, just so we could, you know, have him make do his him. thing, Mess just so we could make fun of him and have somebody to make fun of besides Liam Wolf. So, mm. yep. <laughs> so, um, yuppers. What do you think about this whole mainstream thing? Oh, the mainstream thing? I don't know. Yeah. I think it, I see the perks, but I also see things that could go wrong with it. Um, like, I mean, per, it won't be the same. For lack of a better term, just perverting the fandom and things like that because mm-hmm. people are just going to be doing it because it's cool. It's too late for that. It, well, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> people are just going to be doing it because they think it's cool rather than because they really feel that they do have a connection to the animal world and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll just be doing it because everyone else is doing it. Just like... You know, with dubstep and things, people just started listening to it because because it's cool. Because it's cool, you know. And I, I have the same feelings about like if Doctor Who goes mainstream. And That's another like one that. to talk about. Yes, it is mainstream, it's getting there. it is. It's it's on its way and it's very close. Yeah. I think the one thing that's important about things like these, it's the celebrities who get behind things uh-huh. that are you mm-hmm. know underground. Doesn't matter what it is. And I think one thing to think about is the type of fans that Taylor Swift will attract. Yeah, and that I mean it. It would be, yeah, <laughs> it could be not so great for yeah, a lot of exactly. people. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, basically, I, I have the exact same opinions. And um, I'm glad that you actually have something to say about this. Um, I'm glad when you guys have insight, because <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. want it to just be me and Stryker talking about this. Because no. these guys basically have, like, no, almost no experience with the fandom. Like, you know, like we said in the last show... Um, I, we kind of just know. jumped into this, and they they basically just made a fursona and a name, and Take that's it. Phone. Take your phone. They've never been to a convention um, or anything like that, so they wouldn't really know. They haven't seen much. 
Oh, and well, me and Stryker have been watching stuff like Furcast several times, and we've we've We're, gone to conventions. Yep. Um, actually, you know what? I've only been to one convention in my life. So have I. Only one. W- was it this Midwest, last year's Midwest Furfest? I went. Um, no, I mean I only went one time. I went 2011. And that was my first convention, and uh, I'm glad it's not my last because this because um, coming up in June we're all going to Anthrocon, and because it's Hanske's birthday, and we're gonna kind of celebrate his birthday slash go to Anthrocon, and it's gonna be quite awesome. But yeah, uh, what Andrew said earlier, I also want to talk about Taylor Swift, her fan base. I was thinking that you know she's got a lot of teenage girls that would be like, oh, that's kind of cute, and I'd kind of like to get into that. Or elementary or to middle school. Girls. Yeah, yeah. So it would definitely change <laughs> the type of you know fans that mm, exactly get attracted but, to this, and for different and maybe I don't know. I mm. to say wrong uh, reasons, I wouldn't know, but definitely different. Um, reasons. to I'm I'm just terrified of you know became attracting Bieber fans. Yes. It's, it would be the same. Story. It, would be, it would, the would be the same, same thing. Story. It would because be a lot of Bieber horrifying. fans are also Taylor, Taylor Swift fans. fans. We'd have to instigate some kind of population control. Or something. Yes. Just, just start executing them. Uh, yeah. Look in the chat room real quick and see if anybody says anything. Well, I just found a really great thing. Um, okay. Danny says same. Yes. So I, I'm so assuming yeah. Danny. That means you're agreeing with what we're saying. Yep. Sweet. I'm glad that we're not the only ones who think Taylor Swift is is Satan. Um, <laughs> I didn't go that far. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> thinks Taylor Swift is disgusting. Really? She so. said what? She really? That was a meme. I've never well, she there's, said. there's this meme, There's this picture, and it's got Ellen DeGeneres asking Taylor Swift, "Hey, like, when, who was the last boy you kissed?" And Taylor Swift says, "This eight-year-old boy at my concert." And to that, Ellen DeGeneres says, "That's gross. You're disgusting." Which Ooh. I agree with. I believe yes. she was being sarcastic from what I know. Danny the Border Caller, she used to not be Satan. I agree with you. Yes, She yes. used to be great. It always goes straight to their head. I found, yeah, because, I found something. Because my sister, my sister was a Taylor Swift fan when her first album came out. And she wasn't half bad. She was just this kind of art, this artist that was just like a small town country artist, you know. Your sister's told me I she talked to her news. on MySpace before. She did? Yeah, she had a, co- a little conversation yeah, that's with That's pretty cool. Yeah. Taylor Swift, yeah. I found something that's worthwhile mentioning. In the okay. News. Would you like to talk about I will the story? talk about this. Okay, so back to news segment things, because that's what we do. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> just a video. It's actually, there's a video connected to it. I can type in the link in the chat room for you guys to watch it, too. Um, but it's a shelter dog runs away to visit the owner in the hospital. Um, and it says Xander the Husky was so upset when his owner was hospitalized last week that he broke out of his home in Bay Shore, New York, and walked two miles to the hospital his owner was staying at to pay him a visit. Xander had never been to the hospital before, and it is believed that he was able to amazingly track the scent of his owner all the way back to the hospital. Put up the link I can, so I can play it. What's that? Put up the link so I can okay. play it. Um, I don't know. That's pretty sweet that... That is that's dogs that can. Is. That's I mean I've heard do that. I've heard several stories like that. I mean like I said last time, I'm impressed with the loyalty of dogs because I did hear a story one time where a dog, um, his master would. What's your username and password? Mine. Put it in. Your mother. Not my mother. <laughs> oh, watch it. it. I'll just put it in my own. Okay, just do it. So um, there goes Liam out the door again. <laughs> what you gonna do, Liam? It is kind of hot. We should open the window. To the window. There's so much body heat. To the wall. To the I, am wall. Sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take a spot. Just for a while. I, so. I will be leaving. Soon. There we go. Okay, the yes. link to this is up. But to continue the story, it says his... Um, his owner, John Dolan, was hospitalized with a skin condition. Xander took Dolan's absence really hard and blah, 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 blah. Uh, um, Xander took it upon himself to find Mr. Dolan at the Good Samaritan Hospital two miles away, crossing a busy four-lane highway to get there. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and this this dog was adopted from a from a like rescue shelter and was brought back to health by his owner, and it's just... An example of why dogs are better than cats. Exactly. <laughs> that is, that is cats incredible. are cute, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're only cute when they want to be cute. It dogs are always they cute. They are very, very... You know. hey, take your, your laptop. It is said that petting the stomach of a cat is like frolicking on the back hair of angels. What? 
<laughs> I don't know whoever said that. That is kind of scary. I believe Confucius said that. <laughs> Confucius in one of his say. third writings. <laughs> Avon knows everything about Confucius. Because <laughs> he's eyes. Asian. It, it, it comes is. with the eyes and the math talent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was in the brochure. When Are you getting it, got Striker? Him. It was in the brochure. I, I, have, <laughs> I have to uncensor links and chat to family. Censor stuff. Why, why do you uncensor stuff? Because you seem a bastard. Boobs. Lots and lots of boobs. Let's uh, go back to you stream this and check something. Another right. pet food commercial. On this? Oh. Danny, are these are these pet food commercials coming up on Ustream? I saw one. That'd be really, really ironic. Yes. It would, or coincidental? Maybe What's maybe that's something ironic? to do with the tags. Yeah, oh, he that's says, weird. Yeah. That's weird. Maybe it does have something to do with the tags. Maybe people like these people are interested in animals. Yeah. Especially them dog food commercials. Because otherwise, yeah, that's that's spooky. Right. <laughs> that's, that's that's weird. <laughs> it's fate. I, I mean, I saw one earlier. Um... But yeah, I mean, if you see these ads, you should. Everyone should get ad blocker for Firefox and or Chrome. I guess we're using Chrome right now, so I don't have it on this. You can one. get it for free. It's nice. Yeah, it's free. It's, it's amazing. Real nice. It's it's something that everybody should have, so we can finally get rid of those stupid ads on YouTube. Yeah. Because that's one of the worst things to ever happen to the I internet. I hate ads. Oh. The only thing, and it, it's great for Pandora too. The only thing it doesn't work on is Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, because you like, have to disable it before we you can still watch have anything. to do all this crap so you can watch this, which ticks me off. But what ifs? Exactly. We aren't talking about very much news today. Well, we don't have much news to talk about. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry not your fault. I'm, uh, it's uh, for the world not being exciting, but it probably is. We just aren't finding anything. So, because you know. I, I have no idea where Furcast gets all their news. I I know they get some of them from from uh, Animal Planet news, but not everything. Mm-hmm. See here, we have to go back here. Anyway, that was yeah. a pretty good article about the dog. Um, because I, I you know I heard a story very similar to that one time about. Uh, an owner that would go home from work every day or something mm. like that on the train, the train station. Yeah. And then once he died, I could, I could the dog the link. Sweet. Post it. Okay. Repost it. Anyway, and anyways, once the guy died, the dog, the dog kept going to the train station for the rest of his life. Wow. Every well, there's at actually, the same time. There's a story about that here in a tumble. I don't know the exact story, but I mean, there's like three different versions of it, but there's a tombstone in the Atoma cemetery. That's a great Dane. And, um, well, there's always flowers on it. Is, do you know where the flowers come from? They're just people randomly. Like put it people it. randomly like put like a wreath of flowers around it. But the story is, is that the guy died, and this Great Dane like stood over his grave every single day until the Great Dane died. Wow. Um, and, and that's that's not an uncommon thing. I actually I've heard about multiple cases of that. And oh yes, yeah, so have I. Yeah, which you know, I mean, uh, would a cat do that? No, no, no. A cat would not do that. That's pretty cat cool. So. We need, love we need when it's convenient for them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And we, okay. we need could, to. They would eat you. They would. <laughs> Danny the border collie. I'm assuming that you're a dog guy since, you since your name is border collie. <laughs> um, I like it, border collies. I do too. If, you, if you don't agree with us about these dogs things, man, like shoot us a link because we'd love to hear it. But here we go. Here we go. Here's the story. Okay. okay. Down and paid him a visit. When John Dolan was hospitalized with a skin condition last week, his wife says their dog Xander took it hard. He's depressed, totally depressed. I think he was crying, I I swear to God. Then Xander seemingly decided he had to be by his owner's bedside. Xander broke out of their Bayshore home and made his way to the Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center more than two miles away. The four-legged friend likely went under the Robert Moses Parkway and crossed a busy four-lane highway to get there. A hospital employee found the dog on the street outside of the building where Dolan was being treated. It took a few days to sink in, really. He was coming to see me. The Dolans got the seven-year-old Husky from a shelter five years ago and nursed him back from starvation. They say he's been like a son ever since. He's my boy. I mean, uh, we don't have children. We have three beautiful dogs, so, you know, uh, he's my buddy. I walk with him a lot, so we bond, you know, a lot. And a few days later, Xander tried a second visit. The couple believes Xander was tracing John's scent to the hospital and following his heart. I don't know how he got there. I, I've never taken him there. He's my buddy. Those boys got to stick together. The Dolans say this proves that a shelter dog can be a fantastic dog and take care of you as well as you took care of the dog. In Bayshore, Adrian Sapino. Fox- Does your brother watch this? He wants to watch it. Anyway, that's a good story. Um, Great story. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we brought that up because I mean, also the, yeah. the one in Tumwa here, I've never seen that gravestone. Mm. It's really cool. Is it the one by Court Street? Yeah. Well, and there's another thing that supposedly this is just 
lore, I don't actually believe this. There's another thing that someone said that it actually, like, no matter where you're standing, the dog is facing you, but I don't completely believe that. Like, staring at you. Yeah. Yeah, which, there's all sorts of crap like that. Mm. Believe to be haunted. (laughs) Yes, but like I mean, I've I've never heard, I've I've never even seen that gravestone. I guess I've never been in the Tomwa C- Cemetery mm-hmm. before. It's so. a cool cemetery. It, it's really cool, actually. Someone's texting me. Who this is? Wes. Yeah. I'm Chrome good. is the best. Is Wes watching this? Wes, are you watching this? If you are, shoot me a text, man. Yeah, I I know Ethan wants to watch us. I like I saying that. Yeah. Shoot shoot me a text. I should shoot be like, me a text. It sounds cool. That's like that's like my new like catchphrase. Like shoot me a text, bro. Hey, shoot baby, me text. shoot me a text. What kind of caliber of hey, text I just, do you want? I, what I, kind of I, caliber? I want a nine millimeter. Hey, I just met in you. In the face. This is crazy, but here's my number. So shoot me a text, maybe. Oh, nice. Mm. Nice. Mm. Trademark Mason Ferguson. Yes. He we still, still have single, one ladies. email. He is still I'm single. single. Mm. And I think on the As am I. FYI. Oh, we have, do we have any more emails? We have one. Hail Stormpaw. Nice. Yes. Congratulations to Hail Stormpaw. I hope he's watching because you were the very first and only person to send us an email. You are. Indeed. <laughs> he well, is. I will send you an email just to make you feel better. Okay. What's your, what's your fersona going to be? What? What's your fursona? Okay. All right. I want to okay. ask I want to ask these guys this. Okay. You human guest peoples. Okay. If you guys had to decide what your fursona is, like which is like what animal you would choose to represent you, what would it be, and if if you have a reason why, Andrew, you can go ahead first. I would be an owl. And, and why is that? Because people always say I kind of have a face like an owl. I, I and they're smart. We're broadcasting in the living room. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Avon. I don't know. I'd probably have to be um, a squid. A squid. That is yeah. amazing. That's interesting. Multiple appendages and a beak. How fucking cool is that? That's, that's valid. <laughs> I never thought about it that way. And you can shoot oil. Hey, or no, that's ink? an octopus. Ink. Well, no, squid shoot ink too, squid, don't they? Squid shoot ink, yeah. I, I have a friend, um, Joseph Hicksonbaugh, who wanted to be a honey badger. <laughs> Just so he can so say he, honey badger don't so care. So he, could Probably. he does not give a shit. <laughs> honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't We're care. We're broadcasting in your living room right now. We Hi are. to the herring family. We love Hello. you. Hello, herring. And I am out. Okay. Thank you for being kind and letting me talk on your podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. We it love you. It was fun having you on the Until show. Until we meet again. Yep. Thanks for Until coming. Until we meet again. again. God so, damn, I'm just moving up the corporate level. You lane. are, yeah. man. Yeah. He's you get your own microphone. Our main human host. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Ethan, yeah. Ethan wants us to get on Facebook so we can talk to him. But Tell we, Ethan. Ethan, dude, make, go, us, go make go a thing on, on Ustream. Go on oh, Danny Cordovalli says goodbye. Oh, 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 he's saying goodbye to Andrew. Oh, you're saying goodbye to Andrew, to not to us. Okay, I was sad. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Okay. He's like, I'm just going to randomly it. leave because you guys are not entertaining anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, worse things have happened. I watch this podcast for the news. Yeah, that's, that's all. Reason. And as soon as we're done with the news, we're like, I'm out. Yep. I'm, I'm leaving. Done. I'm, I'm done. Yes. All right. Well, sweet. So I think on the last half hour we can talk about the one the one email that we have from mm-hmm. our it's wonderful. Actually, it's a good email. I mean, it is got, a it's wonderful. Got, it's, like, a, it's got a lot of. And I'm thinking we could talk about it for a long time. Oh yeah, it's got oh a lot yes. of pr- uh, uh, potential for a good, good for a good discussion. Mm-hmm. Yes, but uh, we could, I mean we could talk about it for a while because uh, that's a you know we said that a while. It's a really good question. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really upset because I don't have any coffee. Did Liam Wolf leave his coffee over there? Yeah, he did. Is it still hot? No. I want it. It's gone. Okay, I'll just fill it up. Give Shut me that coffee. Okay, man. Dude, calm down. So what else do we want to talk about? Do you have any other news articles? Uh, I don't have a computer that's working right now. Well, my internet's not working one? right now. No, because we just did one on dogs. We needed. We needed. But well, dogs are awesome. Well, but we need to. We need to have some very some some. Bye guys. Bye, Bye Andrew. Bye. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Okay, do you want me to read this you one? I, I, do you want to take it or do you want me to take it? I don't care. I'll take it. All right, it's you take my it. turn to do you a new do it. story. Jeez, boy. Louise, man. I didn't know that we were taking turns. My okay, God. Okay, you ready for this? Yeah. Should sharks swimming near popular beaches be killed? I don't <gasps> know. Should they? What do you think? The Australian state of Western Australia, okay, has proved yeah, an unprecedented... S- you didn't know that? Australia is split up into states. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. Cool. Okay, let me finish. Fun fact. Well, <laughs> The Australian state of Western Australia has approved an unprecedented set of new measures aimed at protecting beachgoers from sharks after six attacks were recorded in the state this year alone. Um, reports the BBC, shark seems to um, 
according to the BBC, sharks deemed to pose an imminent threat to beachgoers will now be uh, systematically caught and possibly killed. Hmm. I hope they uh, have a big enough boat for that. Uh, uh, Jaws reference. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> The actions have understandably raised significant concerns for from environmentalists and animal activists. No kidding. How will the threat of shark attacks be adequately re- uh, assessed? How will this affect the local ecosystems? Could this endanger the population numbers of certain targeted species? Will catching and killing select sharks even be effective at reducing the risk of the attack? There's also the question of whether the peace of mind beachgoers is worth the lives of sharks that, in many cases, are protected species. That's a good topic because it's it's another one of those things that's just hard to have an opinion on because well, I mean, do, you either do, way do they do they grill them when they kill them that would be a little bit far so I don't think you could really eat them it'd be like yeah. eating like the cartilage of a of like a chicken wing which is not very good no well, anyway well, um, Ethan's on here so. yeah I but mean, you make soup with it, I guess uh, anyways yeah. that that I mean, you I, know. it's an interesting topic because we could we could say the same thing about other animals that, yes. that potentially kill things. I mean, we talk about you know poisonous spiders; they they kill a lot of people every year. Yes. Um. So I mean, does that mean that when we see them, we should kill them, even though most people do? You know, it's a topic that it's it's a idea that we can put into other things. You know. Yeah. Um. The question is 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 are these sharks? A lot of times there's there's things with you know hormones and you know yeah. mating season type of things or you know a lot it's actually been said that like you know like certain makeups that people wear or certain sunscreen and things like that can actually affect mm-hmm. what wh- you know what the what the animal does i mean specifically sharks they're they're very scent oriented so i mean if there's a scent that ticks them off or, or triggers something just right in their brain they're going to attack, you know? Yeah. So, And it, it also depends on how endangered they are because if there's really – I mean, if they're really not that endangered, they can do they can do something to keep them away. Like, I mean, I think instead of just killing them, they could do – they could figure out a different yeah, solution. They yeah. can, they can like, some kind of electromagnetic uh, fence mm-hmm. or something – yeah, I mean, like, they're very sensitive to electromagnetic fields, so we could yeah, that's that is a good point. They could try that, but yeah. another like, issue too is you're talking about you know having sharks coming into these populations, but the the question is is um are the population like um are, are the populations of the shark are they there for um like I don't know for feeding purposes or you know yeah. that's another or, issue too or, we can know, bring up because if they are about, then they'll be um, looking for food and that you know they'll find anything they can right because so. i mean um mm-hmm. over uh fishing is a big deal too in Australia, yes. Hawaii, basically a lot of the pacific I don't, i'm not too sure about the atlantic though but well, yeah and then they don't so. naturally won't they don't na- won't uh naturally go for uh humans unless yeah. there's nothing else to eat and right. then they'll just be desperate you know so i don't know yeah i mean like if they could feed the sharks or something yeah no. or you no. know i mean there's there's certain cases if you, if you, I mean, they could do tests to where they're like, is this it, like, say like May and Mar, May and April or something are, are where the sharks are more heavily populated, close that beach during that time. Something yeah. like that. I mean, it's Australia. Right. There's plenty that's, of beaches, Yeah, you know, and that might be a mating ground for those sharks. And, and, that's, and that's not to say that there's a lot of other extremely dangerous animals in Australia. Well, no, I mean, like, Australia's got the highest. I mean, the spiders have health bars for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some pretty massive spiders that they have health bars. Yeah. And then the snakes. Uh huh. Yeah, the snakes are. Insta kill. Damn, snake, you scary. The snakes and (laughs) all this stuff. Damn, Richard. Okay. You scary. Your brother sent me a link and. Of what. Because we uh, taste bad. It's not really furry wise, but should we talk about it? It's about. Mexican Shit. TV crew jailed in Nicaragua for 30 years. Whoa. All right. Do you want me to read it? Go ahead. Why not? Okay. A judge in... You know what? No, we'll, we'll read I'm this delicious. later. I don't keep talking about the shark thing. Okay? I kind of do, I, mean, I was actually thinking the same thing. Like, I mean, yeah. talking about the mating thing, like, imagine <laughs> if... if uh, just, just imagine a guy who's full of testosterone, and you walk in, and, and for lack of a better term, you, you cock block him. Yeah. I mean, he might kill you. He's going to be pissed. I mean, exactly. I'm thinking about it, bull sharks yep. have, what is it, the highest amount of testosterone in their body? Yeah. Or any mean, animal on the planet, right? Did, did it say what kind of shark it was that was um, I saw the new story up. Uh, and, and bull sharks actually are one of the most aggressive sharks. I think it's bull sharks and tiger sharks. Is that I, right? I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, they're the most aggressive. It 
It just says it sharks. It just says sharks. It's pr- yeah. well, that looks like a great white. We it got does. a picture. It looks like a great white shark. So that's I'm assuming that's but, what it is. But you never know. I mean, they could be talking about just a bunch of sharks. It does look and, like. Yeah. I mean, like I'm not an ag- animal rights activist or anything, but I still don't believe in you know them killing them just because they have well, no, no other way. Yeah, just they, they could do something else. Well, and there's I mean, there's tons of different. I mean, like what about. Like, why not net off the beach? I mean, I've seen that before, that they've done that. Like, well, they've, then they've, they get caught in the nets and... You know. That's true. I mean, yeah. that, that's that's endangering. Other, but, I mean, there's other things you could do, like, to... I mean, what if you used, like, a chain link fence? I mean, they're not going to swim into that and get caught, necessarily. I mean, smaller fish will, I guess. Uh-huh. But it, it's just one of those things that I think that there are other options that we can take. Right. Right. And, and, exactly. if th- and if those fail, then, you know, ultimately, maybe the only thing that will work is killing the sharks. But... You know, yeah, like, like I said, like I said, you know, they could use like some kind of uh, electromagnetic thing because they use, right now they've got shark sticks that uh, divers use to yeah you know, ward them off. I mean, yeah, I mean they could do that, but yeah, but again, I mean Australia's probably just used to this kind of thing, so the beachgoers are just like, oh, we might get attacked by a shark. Same thing as when I walked out of my back door yesterday. <laughs> we <laughs> so, got sharks <laughs> out there. So yeah, because I mean, I mean, like you know. Uh, Australia, you scary. You know, Australia, they got a lot of scary. stuff. Where is Liam? Is Liam still out there? We should tell him that, that there's a s- open spot for him. Because pretty soon we're going to be talking about the animals we picked yeah. for our fursona. Yeah. And he needs to be in here. Yeah, uh, sure. Why did you pick a human? Oh, he's so funny. Anyway. Awkward laugh. I, I don't know. If the, what, what else could we say about the shark? I mean, I feel like... I. My stance is they need to try other options before they decide to ultimately kill them. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's my same yeah. my there same stance. I don't think there's much else to say. Do you want to read yeah. this next yeah. story? Yeah, I, I can read that. I oh. actually think um, depth charges would probably be the best way to eradicate this problem. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> depth charges. Few th- there are a few things that cannot be solved with high explosive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And fire. And True fire. that. Kill it with fire. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna go back okay, so to do the next news. The other news fire. Story. This is a uh, this is a, a news story from Austin's brother Wes. So it's from BBC, um, and it's a fake Mexico TV crew was jailed in Nicaragua for thirty years. A judge in Man- Managua found them guilty of money laundering and organizing a drug link between Mexico and Cor- Costa Rica. They were arrested in August after police found the cash and traces of cocaine in six vans, some painted with Mexico's Televisia network logo. Central America is increasingly a transit route for Mexican drug gangs. The only woman in the group was named as their leader and sentenced to 20 years for international drug trafficking, eight and a half years for organized crime, and seven years for money laundering, a total of 35 years. However, 30 years is set by Nicaraguan laws as the maximum prison sentence. Some Spanish guy will fit or lady will finish her sentence on August 24th, 2042. The money in the vans have been cons- confiscated and the 18 Mexicans had already been found guilty in December, but were awaiting their sentences. Um, at the time of their arrest, a self-proclaimed journalist said they had been sent to discover a high profile murder for television, Mexico's biggest TV network, but the company quickly denied any link to the group. It is its lawyer said that they still they are still awaiting results of the analyst of the signature on the supposed letter of accreditation to assertion the possible involvement of a Televisia po- employee. Local newspaper La Prensa reports the defendants denied the guilty charges against them. So oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I, the drug trade's always an interesting thing. Um, sometimes I I just feel like people need to I don't know grow a mind and not do stupid stuff Mm -hmm. um but at the same time i also realize that honestly drug dealing and and drug things is is one of the only ways that you can actually be successful be a a successful businessman for lack of a better term in Uh the central america region because of how poor they are because of how um you know i don't even know the words i'm looking for but you know (laughs) Like that is that is a I, story I, I though. kind of understand where op- they're op- coming from. Opium when is like the cash crop in a lot of these mm-hmm. third third world countries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when you're, oh, dude, Danny the border collie gave us stuff. Ooh, um, okay. but oh shoot, what was I saying? I mean, sometimes you have to ask: Is there any other option for these people? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know. I do have another news story though. Okay, Four bald eagles found shot. 
Ooh. At Washington State Lake. That's no fun. Oh, there's a video on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quickly, very quickly, I want to talk about this one before we start, because this one, I'm, we're not going to go into discussion about it, but I want to read it. So this is a story about a crocodile that escapes on a qu- uh, Qantas flight. So... <laughs> It says, you've heard of snakes on a plane, <laughs> but what about a crocodile? That is it. Sounds like a sequel fucking to crocs on my motherfucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It sounds like a sequel to a resi- ridiculous Hollywood movie, but this really did happen. That's pretty cool. Like, I'm just, I-, I wanted to read this because just imagine being a tourist and being like, oh, oh you know, I'm just like being on this plane and stuff. Mm-hmm. And oh, look, there's a freaking crocodile. Just like waiting for like Samuel L. Jackson to like come in and. <laughs> I'm tired of these mother uh, crocodiles on this mother plane. You, you, you can only, you can it's okay to cuss. I already broke that one. My family is watching. Well, okay. <laughs> it's okay. We've all got very large vocabularies. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> We've got colorful it's vocabularies. It's okay if it's a quote, right? Mm, right. Yeah, yeah, if, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, did you have something you wanted to read? Uh, oh actually, yeah. We okay. We well, let's let's get to this video first. Yeah, video. Okay. Yes. Video time. Just real quick. Push the button. I'm gonna let us juggle. Thank here. you to Danny the Border Collie for giving us this news link. Play. Thank you very much. The outrage and the rewards keep growing over the shooting of four bald eagles in Snohomish County. Thirteen thousand dollars are already being offered. New at five thirty. Environmental Gary Chinnam shows us how this crime has struck a nerve. I've never seen anything like this in 11 years. It's just, it's egregious. Sergeant Jennifer Marstad still can't believe what she saw after driving to investigate a report of dead eagles at a remote lake near Granite Falls. There was one bird by this first group of trees, another one directly in front of us, and two over here. Someone shot the three adults and one juvenile eagle that were hanging out in these trees. They were easy targets. It's the perfect place for an eagle to perch. They get a clear view of the lake and of this small creek, which is chock full of little fish. Yeah, that's not being stupid. Whoever shot them didn't take any feathers or talons. They just left yeah, them there, floating in the lake. That's awful. I hope that whoever did this is caught. Yeah. This is just unheard of. People in Granite Falls are angry too. I think it's terrible, and I hope they get who got them, whoever did this. The chances of that were greatly improved today when the Stillaguamish tribe added ten thousand dollars to the thirty-five hundred dollar like reward Facebook, already being like, offered oh, by State Fish and Wildlife, the, the Humane this? Society, and Conservation so Northwest. Boobs, this so attack is raising much. money oh, I mean, and tempers. No. I've seen crimes of opportunity, but never <laughs> with eagles. With that much reward money out there, police are confident whoever did it will be caught. And they'll be going away for a while. It was more than By the looks of this one spotted near the investigation scene. The Eagles Jerks. are here to stay. Near well, Granite Falls, Harry Chittam, That's King true. 5 News. That's true. That is an interesting story. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's pretty awful. Yeah, it what is. What do you guys it? have to say about that? Because yeah, I got nothing. I mean, there's not much to say. Douchebags. Exactly. That's all I have to there's say. Really not much to say. I mean, you know, I mean, if it's a self defense thing, that's another story. <laughs> but, you know, as a but bald, bald eagles, I mean, do, do they really attack people? I don't know. I mean, ah! um, well, there's this one, that one video of a golden eagle t- picking, picking up, up a baby. Chi- picking up a baby. Oh, uh, that was proven to be fake, though. Actually, yeah, it, that, that was that was um a, a an assignment deal. by some people at a college, and somebody said uh, it's it, hilarious. It it was fun. It like the story behind it is even funnier. Like the um basically we're talking about a video on YouTube of a bald eagle that comes down and picks up a baby Birdemic. and like it looks ah. real because of video effects nowadays and we could probably bring it up now yeah and um it looks real but it was actually proven to be fake because because uh some people at a college it was their college assignment to make a viral video and they succeeded <laughs> so we can we can watch that real quick You got it up. Let me switch to just over here. Birdemic. Yeah. It's a no, that's it's a terrible movie. <laughs> Birdemic. Oh, I might I might be thinking of something else. And I didn't even know that was a movie. Are you back? Yeah. Hey, hey, watch this video, Liam. 
Hey, what the fuck? It's correct? We can replay that because it's like. Anyway, yes, that. Uh, thank goodness that's a fake video because holy hey, cow, man. It's correct? Oh, wait, man, that's a twister. So, um, um, I don't know. For that kid, that might be kind of cool. You've heard of, you know, being raised by wolves, but, you know, but about eagle. being raised by eagles, yeah. Yeah. They will sprout wings and fly instead of just being ferocious. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They've learned cool. the secret to flying by eagles. Oh, there's a bit of lag in the video. Um, well, yeah. I mean, it, obviously we, it, we backed it up and played it again, so. Yeah. I don't know how to fix that. So don't worry about it. It's. This, this it's the we internet. Replayed it. Be. Okay. All right. So, anyway. Maybe if we only had, like, three computers running instead of four. That's true. That yeah, that's true. <laughs> so anyways, uh, moving be. on, it is five minutes past the designated time to read emails. And guess what? We've said this before, but we have an email. Yay! <laughs> so <laughs> you guys sound super duper excited. Oh, man. I, I am just <laughs> overloaded with enthusiasm. And I was like, yay. <laughs> because, okay, here, I'm going to read it. Okay, this is from... Our good friend, Hale oh. Stormpot. Actually, I don't know him, but he's our good friend now. He's from Urbandale. I okay, we'll read that next time. Anyways, the email, he says, um, Hi to all. I am Hale, a local fur or well scale. I, th I think I said that right. I'm sorry. I was wondering, why did you all choose what you are? And what is everyone's take on Therianism and other kin? Um... This is what, what is other kin? We'll have to look it up because I'm not even sure okay, what it means. I'll I'm sorry. Anyways, this is a really good question because we could talk about this for quite a bit. Um, uh, so do we want to go ahead and jump in? Do you want me to go ahead and start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all go right. for it. The reason I picked a fox is because that's... First of all, my personality is a lot like a fox. If you've ever seen like you know foxes on YouTube, they're, they're very similar to me. Um... And they've always been the smaller version of the of the wolves, basically, you know. And that's kind of what I've always been in my life, you know. I'm the smaller version of what everyone else is, except I make fu make up for that with like you know clever and cunning and stuff. And plus, I think they look really really cool. <laughs> and you know what? A, a fox is the most used persona in the world. And I don't care because I love it anyway. And half nice. the reason I got into the fandom was because I love foxes so much. In fact, um, people have given me um, pictures of foxes uh, all the like. My mom, my mom bought me a uh, bi great big framed picture uh, of a fox, and I thought that was really nice because you know my family's supporting me in my decision to become a furry and stuff. That's so I'm cool. really happy for them. What about you, Striker? Well, I'll. Back in the day, you know, before I came like a hybrid, um, I um, remember those days. I started off as a just a regular cheetah, and mainly because you know that just just matched my personality. You know, um, as if you've ever been around, you know, they are they're probably the most friendliest of the uh, big of the uh, big cats. They're I agree. I've I've seen videos just of them. Quiet and shy, and you know. But they are fairly stubborn. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's. Uh, I had a couple of friends that wanted to get into the furry fandom a little bit. At least they wanted to create fursonas before these guys did. This was back when I, before I knew these guys. And they were looking up what the personality traits of each animal are because, you know, if you're going to choose a fursona, at least it has to, have to has to have something to do with your personality. And, you know, I, for me it wasn't even a question. You know, I just knew it was a fox right away. But Hanske over here. I actually really like his persona. It's really cool. You want to talk about it a bit? Sure. Um, yeah, my persona is a grizzly bear. Actually, he's a Native American grizzly bear. Um, the Native American part is just because I have Native American heritage and, and really enjoy Native American culture. Um, the reason, though, that I chose a bear is because, I don't know, I just always kind of like felt related to the bear, I guess. like Not like physically related, but like, you know, similar characteristics um where i'm pretty chill most of the time um you know and i'm okay doing my own thing not i don't necessarily have to be part of a group all the time and whatnot but um 
and it takes a little while for me to open up to people and whatnot, but if you mess with somebody I care about, it's a lot like, you know, like a, a mama bear, for lack of a better term. Like, if you mess with someone that, with some with, with a bear's face. cub, yep. he'll, it'll mess you up. And that's how I am. Like, if you mess with one of my family members or mess with someone I care about, you're screwed, basically. Um, and so that's a lot of the reason that I felt that a bear was, was very much what my persona would be. Um, so, yeah. And it's interesting how some people, you know, like China Rose, she immediately knew that she was a panda. She's like, you know, I mean, China, by the way, China Rose isn't here with us today. She had to work. Sad face. Um, so we're missing a big piece of our puzzle. But when she, when I first heard, told her about it, you know, we talked about last time how she didn't, she thought that the furry fan was all about, you know, sex and stuff like that. So, um, so that's why she didn't like it at first. And then I told her, you know, the long story short, I got her into it cause she knew what it was really about. And she immediately knew what her persona would be. She said, it's a panda. And too bad she's not here to talk about that. Cause I didn't really ask her the details about why she chose a panda. We'll just have to assume that she thinks they're yeah. cool. In my, in my case, that's that, that's just it. It was an immediate connection. Yeah, yeah. and and then later on, I uh, I think about uh, doing a redesign of my persona, and then you know, almost immediately, I was thinking, you know, jaguar. Yes, it's jaguars are awesome. Very strong. Love the night. I like the night, mm-hmm. and. You know the badasses. Yes, and most and lynxes and lynxes, of course, are cute and fluffy. Yes. So, um, but yeah, each each furry has their own uh, persona that reflects their personality in some way, or it reflects a piece of their personality. And for me, my persona, my fox character, like, I mean, it, it, foxes foxes do this a lot, where. You know, foxes are real, real quiet sometimes, and they're just real serious sometimes. And other times, they'll just be, like, all crazy and playful and stuff. And it's the two sides of foxes, and that's the two sides of me. And Dante Padfoot is... See, most furries, they're socially awkward in real life, so their fursona is their more outgoing side. Well, for me, it's the opposite, because in my real life, I'm actually, you know, socially awesome. And <laughs> socially Check awkward. Check your privilege. Awesome. <laughs> yes, I love that word. <laughs> Anyways... So being socially awesome <laughs> and then anyway, not socially awkward. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know why you guys are looking at me like that. And, fo- and, uh, you know, my, my Fox character, uh, Dante Padfoot is my more serious and quiet and then lonely side that I just keep to myself. So I always thought that what is, what, which part of your personality does yours reflect Hanske? Um, I don't know. I feel like mine just reflects who I am in real life. Uh, I think I think we left out Liam. Yes. Oh, we we were about to. Yes. I'm sorry. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Do you, would you like to talk about why you chose a wolf? Oh, I suppose. Um, I've always liked how wolves work together in packs, and like I said, mine's alpha, and I've always just been a strong leader since since I was a kid. I'm always trying to take charge, make sure things are getting done help out with stuff as much as I can and you know I just like the pack I just like being able to work with other people and well my family we did own a half wolf half dog at one point half I think if I'm right it was half German Shepherd as well mm. and I mean that's just what caught my eye was just that wolf the, he looked more like a wolf but acted like a German Shepherd Yeah. so that's just what got me and I guess that's where I just started yeah, and you know, most people just like I said before, it it usually just clicks with people. You know, they'll they'll get a certain certain persona that reflects their personality and exposes their humanity in a certain way. Like I mean, you know, so, uh, you know, me and Striker are somewhat of uh, you know, furry philosophers. We could talk about this all day, but mm-hmm. we don't want to talk about this all day because we'd be hogging up airtime and we have to get off at 6:30 mm-hmm. because Friday night tech comes on at 7. <laughs> and I have right in play practice to go to a seven. Com. Yes. Yep. So, but yeah, I mean, like I said, we could talk about this forever. Um, we could talk about what it means to be furry for every for everyone. It's a little bit different, but at the very basis of it, it's the love for anthropomorphic animals in ways that you can't describe. Right. That reflects your humanity in ways that you didn't know was possible. And, and that, it sounds really cheesy, but it's completely true. And that kind of segues in, right in, into theory. Th- Therianism. 
Yes, and that's that's another um, part of this this um, art uh, this uh, quite uh, pff, email sorry. email. Thank you. I was looking for that word. This email that he sent us, and uh, he talked about what does Therianism mean to us, and this other one, I don't know what this means. I'll have to look it up on other Wikipedia. Can? Other can. I have it. Other, so other can is the idea that um, it, it's kind of like you know Skyrim, how the dragonborn is someone in a human body but with the soul of a dragon. That's yeah. essentially what other can is from what I can tell. It's like uh-huh. you are human, you, you have a, a mortal human body, but you think that you have a non-human soul and a lot of times it's like this this and this is on wikipedia so i'm not sure it's completely accurate but what it says is a lot of it ex- includes like people thinking they're like angels demons dragons elves fairies vampires werewolves things like that on the inside like their soul they have the soul of that whereas they have the body of a human is what another kin is yeah and i, I have met a lot of people that do that but me personally i don't necessarily believe in that i, th- I think it's just all your mindset i think it is know. too i think that i think I'm, I'm with you on that i don't necessarily i'm not gonna bash somebody who thinks they're other kin but yeah, i don't necessarily I mean, believe in it um just because i don't know i just don't think that it's and and real i guess therianism is is similar mm-hmm. as, as far as i know I've, i haven't really taken much research into it do you know much about therianism the- therianism you know it's uh it's, it's more of just having you as far as my understanding is it's uh basically you know you can you recognize yourself as a human, but basically, but you you have like a spiritual connection uh-huh. with uh, with yeah. an animal, and I and that's and another there's one. Uh, and uh, some will, some theorians have like a like a phantom shift. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've definitely mm-hmm. heard about that. Where some some people believe that they can feel a tail on them or something yeah. like that. It, it's so like if you have have like an amputated arm and they can. Someone with an amputee, an amputee can still feel their missing limb. Yeah, yeah, it's that's so, the same it's thing. It's sort of the same idea there. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and you know, I I don't like to you know bash people or anything, but I I don't personally believe mm-hmm. in that completely either. Well, and and from what I can tell about what is it, is it? How do you, what's the theorianism? It, it's I mean, it a Native Americans kind of believed in that. They believed exactly. in a lot of tr- not every Native American tribe, but a lot of tribes believed that they had you know a totem or a spirit animal, an animal that they could um connect to that they indians were kind of the first so furries indians were the first furries in terms of the you know mm-hmm. the the uh, feeling connection the to the connect- spirit yeah. world or animal yeah, world yeah. so but you know me personally i just believe in the in the personality connection mm-hmm. with a certain animal oh yeah yeah so and and like i said i'm not trying to shoot anybody down or anything but it's just my I mean, personal personally you know literally you know, I don't really feel that, but you know, metaphorically, you know, there is that. I do feel that sort of connection mm-hmm. in a metaphorical sense. Yeah, and it is. It is some. Uh, you know, it's it's something that you're that I, I have. You know, felt stuff like that in my mind sometimes, but it's not. You know, for me, it's not not to an extent where I feel phantom limbs or anything like that. You know, right. but you know, I'm not doubting that that happens. Yeah. The, the uh, human mind is a very uh, complex and interesting thing that mm-hmm. it is. You know we're probably never going to be able to understand any of it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, what does um, our friend Danny the Border Collie think of this discussion we're talking about? Any insight you have on uh, for us? Should we start taking calls? I mean, we only got. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Why did I not think about that? So hey, me. we have a Skype account set up, and you can, if you get your Skype open, you can call us, and you will hear your own voice on the show. What? So <laughs> just add us um, at uh, Claus and Convo. It's not spelled any other way. No spaces. Just type in Claus and Convo and add us. Word for word. And call us, and we'll take a call. And see what you have to say about this subject, or you could just talk about whatever you want, whatever whatever you really want to. I mean, if you all if all you want to do is hear your voice on the radio, that's fine, that's fine, because hearing your voice on the ra- on the uh, podcast is pretty fun too. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Liam, do you have anything to say about this? Or nope, nope, just kind of listening. And our I think our mm-hmm. human guest is kind of just like chilling. What the heck are you guys like talking villain. about? So this is why it's fun to have a human guest just to see his shocked face. You know what? I want to ask Aven something. Aven, what do you think of the furry fandom? Just give me your honest opinion. Don't even care. 
Uh, to be honest, um, it's I, I'm not gonna say it's weird, but it's 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 different. weird in a good way. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. But um, I'll like, let you talk. It's it's just you know um, not what you're accustomed to. You know that's that's kind of the big shock. But once you get into it, you know you realize that it's actually a really good community and like it is. You know, there's uh, like a lot of support out there and. Um, uh, talking about going mainstream, I don't know if it's going to be good or not. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you can see our point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I was I was pretty big into dubstep when um, when it wasn't very popular. Yeah, yep. Then you know when it started going mainstream, it it, it lost a lot of its like it's heavy charm. modulation bass, you know, stuff like yeah. that, and it's just become more like techno cliche. And, yes. yes. So you know, um, some things that do go mainstream turn out to be okay some things that don't yeah i mean sometimes it works for the better because it just basically gets more awareness like i said uh, the the best case scenario for it going the furry phantom going mainstream is if people just knew about it and we didn't get a whole flood of people that are in it just for the you know just because because that would be bad and then they would it, they would shift it into whatever they want basically and it wouldn't be the same but it would be s- best case scenario is basically like I said if everyone just if more people knew about it so we wouldn't have to explain it every time and a key example of this is like I said heavy metal I mean yeah in the heavy metal subculture you know there has always been that you know that core community behind it so yeah exactly and it won't be quite the same if it goes mainstream or it could be we'll never know I'm getting a text from China Rose she says, I had to explain what a furry was. Um, nice. I've had to do that many a times, and I've actually become really good at it. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I'm really good at making it really brief and basic, you know, because I've had to explain it to 100,000 people. And Avon here, apparently, did you already know about it before I told uh, you? Yes, I did. I was, you, I was a B-tard at one point in time, so oh, wait, what does that I, I kind of got into... People on the unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, I kind of... I kind of got a different side of what it being a furry was before I met yeah. you. So, because because most everyone else, you know, when they see it on the, you know, everyone posts all kinds of furry porn and well, stuff well, just to mess with people, yeah. and it gives us a bad image, you know. It's Furry Friday, everybody. Oh. Yeah, that must have bugged you. But yeah, I mean, I've I've also been on 4chan quite a bit and it's it's funny how much how much people hate it now if you put <laughs> if because because now there's like multiple you know furry dedicated sites where you can just put your post your artwork including for affinity which every furry has um in fact i made hanske create one you did. just just because just I because he had two. to have one nice. you have two Yes. And uh, one for spam, one not for spam. Exactly. One for porn, one for not for porn. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I I personally like clean artwork better. I prefer it because yeah. it's it has a better charm to it. And you know, I'm just not a big yeah. porn person. And I just like, don't yeah, like, I like it. I like the taste that you know, just the tasteful stuff. You know, not, yeah, not, yeah. not necessarily <laughs> not nude, but you know, tasteful. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, another another issue too with it too is um, I like seeing other people's artwork because. Like mm-hmm. um, you can compare the animal to their picture to them, and then you can see the correlation between the animal and themselves, which is oh, really yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's that's one of my favorite things about you know the furry fandom is I just really like art, and so looking at really good artist pictures, whether I mean I try to steer clear of the porn pictures, but those are kind of inevitable. Yeah. Um, but you know, just seeing the the pictures is is really cool because there are a lot of good artists in the furry fandom, and I really enjoy art and scene oh, that kind of al- stuff although to be to be honest furry porn is a, a much higher uh tends to be a much higher standard than regular porn yeah kind yeah. of yeah because because artists kind of make a big thing out of it i mean mm-hmm. i mean yeah you just yeah, see avon's yeah. face over here just like kind of scrunching up but there are artists that strictly do that kind of right. stuff and and you know i'm a big fan of jay naylor and he I basically only like his regular stuff. He does a lot of porn. I'm just like, I just screw that, you know. Mm-hmm. Not in the literal sense, but the theoretical sense. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I I mean, I even have fan artwork up here. This is actually Jay Naylor artwork that I've done. So I'm a big fan of his, but I just, again, like I said, I just, I'm not into porn. It's not my thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I like tasteful artwork, like he said right. before. Yeah. And uh, you know, pinups and stuff. Put them on my iPod. It still freaks people out. <laughs> like you know, look at this. I like to show this one to people a lot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. S- I've shown that to. 
just just yeah. basically like you know a pin up um you know one of my you know one of my favorite memes of, that I've ever seen on for affinity is that uh that one the real me meme where yeah that's a good one like or where, where they basically took a their their real life body type uh -huh. and applied their persona I, I need to do that because I actually do have a picture of my real self on Fur Affinity, which is a no-no. <laughs> actually, it's just because most people don't do it. Yeah. Six minutes. We got six minutes. Do you have anything you want to talk about, uh, Liam? Because I feel like feel like we've been ignoring you. Well, that's that's because he's been getting tons of phone calls. Yeah, so from the ladies. Like, is true. All the ladies want to um, talk to Liam Wolf. Only one lady's going, so. <laughs> All right, well. Do you sign in on my name, bro? I am. You are. Are we both? We're we both signed in on my name. You very face. interesting. So yeah. Anyway, um, we do have five minutes left in the show, so I, we should probably talk about how. Has anybody tried calling us? Nope. 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 Oh, yeah. People I, call I, us. Come I have, on. I've had I've had the thing. Uh, we can't really hear anything. I don't have any, I don't have the monitoring on. Oh. Well, well. But well, it next time. It appears we have not had any attempts to call, so. Well, actually, we find haven't a missed anything. That is That's good. Tons of wildlife news. So yes, we can use that. next time we will have much more news, and maybe we'll even have some live music. I mean, we said this last time. Actually, last time we said that we would have a poem about Liam slipping and pee, but we're would we already stretched that way too far, so we're just not going to go anymore with it. He and just he just got excited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, Avon. And I'm he, sorry. Do he doesn't have his big gigantic mug here to to uh. Oh to yeah, uh, yeah. You didn't bring your giant ego, mug this time. So. Just because I'm going to have it laser soon, so. Ooh. Nice. Fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. So yeah, next time, um, mm -hmm. if anyone's you know at least a little bit interested, we it, we'd really like to get emails from you guys. Whatever you want to talk about, we will. Well. To an extent, you know, well, within know. reason. Um, you can bring in if you can bring in emails, and if you don't want your name posted, that's fine. Yeah, if you want to stay anonymous, if you that's want to fine. stay anonymous, just say you want to stay anonymous, and then you can bring uh, emails if you want. I'm anonymous. I'm anonymous. I'm anonymous. I'm anonymous. Nope, 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 nope. Don't start that. We just continue with what we learned. Oh my Yes. Would you guys like to talk about what we've learned today on the show? Yes, I learned that sleep is really important, and you shouldn't not sleep because it's bad. I learned that I talk better with coffee because once I got the coffee, I can I can be more energetic. What did you learn, Striker? I learned stuff. That's that's a good point. What did you learn, our human friend Avon? Uh, I learned if you're drinking, do not try and climb trees because you'll just sprain your wrist. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so what? confused. <laughs> Speaking of random things, I would also like to say that I learned that um, Wald, uh, Voldemort should have used Waldo as a Horcrux. What do you think about that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Liam Wolf, what did you learn on the show today? Nothing. Bye. What? He learned that he needs to turn his phone on silent when the show begins. No, no phone was on silent. It Apparently went back not. to. It went. It was Apparently on vibrate. Not. It went back to uh, the line. But I did turn it off. But we no. did. We did. Um, I have burn it. I have to keep it on for my job. But I know that Avon did learn quite a bit more about the furry phantom that he did not know about before. Uh, yes, yes, I did. I, I indeed. indeed. Yes, you did. did. You indeed, he did. Indeed, Lee. Indeed, Lee. Okay. Whatever. Cool. cool so beans. next time we'll have a lot more for you, because we still. We, I mean, you know, once we get a bigger fan base, we'll have more people sending us emails, and then we can have a lot more stuff to talk about. But yeah, first, sure. I mean, in in this. In the stage that it's in right now, we have one email. Thank you to the guy who sent us an email. And we have we would one like guy on the chat. Thanks we to do. Danny the Border Collie. And that. we're hoping to get more support next time. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully we didn't scare anybody away. No, we, we still got two more minutes. We still got two. I don't know. What are we going to do We can minutes? scare away people in two minutes. Let's yes. do it. Let's impersonate Trey McIntosh. Ah. I'm Trey McIntosh. Ah. <laughs> That's always really fun. <laughs> But it doesn't. It doesn't take too. up two yeah, minutes yeah, though. Brother says we need to get a better webcam. I agree. Yes, we do. We do. This webcam is really okay. I wish you could see it right now because it's taped to the wall it up really there. It really is. It's taped duct tape to the wall. I have one installed on my computer. 
and it's better than that. Exactly. That one was ex- it actually an expensive webcam, but it was a piece of garbage. Tell yeah. You know, how about we try and all put money together and we'll go try and get a new webcam? That sounds good to me. Yes. And next time, I like, next time we'll get more. You know, eventually, Striker and I want to invest in a video mixer, mm-hmm. so we can actually have like you know up close camera shots, and we can we can switch between cameras. That will be really interesting mm-hmm. because then then um, it won't be just one continuous shot of our the tops of our heads and mm-hmm. Hanske's forehead the whole time because he gets cut off there. Anyways, see my once again four chins. I have <laughs> one chin, you butt. Anyways, in the future we'll have once we have more people, Clear once duct tape. more support, we'll have more. Um, emails we'll have more topics if we even get people ca- calling in and eventually we might make the show longer and overlap friday night tech if people decide to watch this instead that will be an honor because everyone loves paradox the wolf except for you guys who don't know who he is nope. no idea i'm ashamed all right it's six thirty. we should sign out so thank you for watching we really hope that all of you have enjoyed um again we'll have more stuff for you next time but we need uh, if we want to be more entertaining, we need more topics. We, we do. We need people to send us emails. So, if you, whatever it is, you know, Doesn't you have to be first up to be around. whatever it is, if you just want to talk about it, and we also want you to call in because we yes. need more people calling in. It it cannot be stressed enough. We've said this fifty times, but we need more people to you know. If you're just kind of watching this, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just send us an email. It will. Even if you just want want us to give you a shout out, we will. We just need more stuff to talk about. And next Indeed. time we'll have more news articles, we'll have more more pre written jokes. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next week at the exact same time, same place. I have been your I still am. This has been Claus and Convo. I am your foxy host, Dante Padfoot. I'm your sexy exhausted host, Hanske Omani. I'm your feline badass host, uh, Striker Chihuahua. I'm your awful wolf, Liam. All right. And this is our human friend, Avon. I am Avon. your human, Avon, who is also a squid. <laughs> Happy Free Friday, everybody. All right, thanks. Um, thanks for tuning in. Catch you later. Peace. Peace.